Okay, so earlier I had put out a live stream talking about my frustration with the new FDRS, the FDRS system and the sync system on how they're actually programming these modules and stuff now. And after spending a few hours offline and then you guys seeing me being frustrated, I wanted to just kind of come back and talk to you one more time about some things that I kind of uncovered and figured out as I'm going through this. Um, it used to be real easy whenever you would program a gateway module before, and that's like right behind where your OBD connector is. If you're hooking up a scan tool or something like that, it would sit right behind it. It's actually part of it. It's part of the HS3 CAN network. It's a uh, communicating system to the body control module that says what's going on on HS3, but it doesn't, nothing else actually controls HS3. It only reports from that gateway module. Now in the new systems, you can't just hook a scanner up to it or a computer up to it and program anymore. You actually have to have a thumbstick that has a pretty large file to it that you have to download from the server to the thumbstick and then take the thumbstick back to the vehicle and then download it into the vehicle. And it's the same way with sync. When I hooked it up tonight to update the sync system in this vehicle as well because there's like seven modules that are out of date, which is not uncommon. I've seen over a dozen modules out of date on brand new vehicles. It just depends on when they were built and how much new data has come out since then. I also uh, experienced this newer um, type of instruction where you would go to FDRS, you would go to the APIM to update it uh, under SW updates, and then you it's right on the top of the screen on the right side whenever you first log into FDRS, and then go over to your module section that kind of has everything all on one screen. Go to SW update, and then it shows you all the modules that are out of date. Click on APIM, it'll go into the system, follow the prompts on the screen. And then eventually it's going to say, put a clean file, like a clean deleted thumbstick, nothing on it, into the computer. And go ahead and download your data file. The file is pretty big. It took me every bit of about 30 minutes to get the files downloaded onto the thumbstick. And then once I got them loaded onto the thumbstick, it says once the screen pops up and gives you a block of instructions, it's like 8 to 10 instructions on the screen, take the thumbstick out. Go over to the vehicle, stick it into the media hub. When it prompts you on the screen, it'll say, keep the thumbstick in until told to remove or something like that. Go ahead and close that screen out, and up in the left corner, it'll say system updating. It doesn't tell you that it's going to recognize the system updating in the left corner, but it, it's there. It'll pop up. And as the system's updating, it's going to eventually get to a point where the computer on your instruction doesn't tell you the truck's actually going to say, turn off and back on the, the engine, tur turn off the key, and then turn it back on and start the engine. And while it's sitting there running, you can go ahead and hit close on that message, and it may take about another 10 or 15 minutes before it says, okay, now you can remove the thumbstick and go over to the computer and plug it in the computer and continue with your block of instructions say yes the programming went through and then it's going to go through and validate the information that you put in there there's some steps in between that they don't tell you on your instruction base here's what i have to tell you when you're going through the system and you're up you're downloading everything onto the usb and stuff like that you're going to get instructions from the computer and you're going to get instructions from the truck but when you're getting instructions from the computer it doesn't say hey Wait for a message that says turn the vehicle off and back on and make sure the engine's running. And then when you acknowledge that and you close that screen out and the vehicle's sitting there running, it doesn't say anything, hey, this could take 10 to 15 minutes. You think something's wrong with the truck and it's glitched out. Keep waiting. Unfortunately, it did take me about 10 to 15 minutes before the truck said, okay, engine, turn the engine off and then back on, make sure the engine's running now. I closed that screen out after I did that, waited and waited and waited and waited and was getting very frustrated. And then about 15 minutes in, I seen it pop up on the screen. Okay, now remove the thumbstick, take it back over to the computer, plug it in, and then go ahead and acknowledge through, through the computer that the programming was successful. So there's a lack of instructions between what the computer is saying and then what the truck is saying. All I can do is tell you, use some common sense follow the instructions on the computer but when the truck tells you to do something you also have to follow the truck prompts as well and then you'll be successful it was very frustrating i was on this vehicle for a total of about eight hours today seven modules down 
And then once I updated like four or five modules and there was only two left, all of a sudden the telematic control unit came on and said it needed to be updated too. So then I go through and I update the TCU and it took an hour to do. Once I updated the TCU, then it popped back up and said, okay, now that all these modules are up to date, now you have to go back through and update the accessory protocol interface module that you've already updated because now it needs to know everything else is up to date. So about a total of eight hours, seven to eight modules that I had to update overall, it was a nightmare. But what I have to say is make sure when you're, if, if you ever get a message from Ford saying update all these modules on this computer or like some of the early model explorers that had a lot of modules that were up to date. There's like special service messages that Ford put out on the PTS website that said if you see modules out of date on this vehicle just update them all and you get straight M time which means just manufacturer time. Whatever time you have into it is what you're going to end up getting paid. Now I don't know if they're going to do that on this particular vehicle but we're going to submit for all the time that I had into this truck and see if I actually get paid all the time that I had into this. Follow the prompts on your computer, follow the prompts on the truck, and then you're going to have to know common sense wise, not com it's not so much common sense, I hate even saying that because I was being, I was, I have a lot of common sense and I was getting frustrated with this. So you're going to have to know that once you take the thumbstick from the truck and put it in the truck to update, close the screen out that is telling you don't remove it until the updating is done then wait there for freaking ever for the update to be done and then the truck will tell you on the radio screen sh shut the truck off turn it back on make sure the engine's running then close that screen out and just wait while there's no updating message on the screen or anything at all you're just waiting there looking at a regular screen like you would normally see and then all of a sudden 10 15 minutes later it says okay we're done pull the thumbstick out go take it back over to your computer then click okay and move to the next step they could have done a better job explaining exactly what to expect, but they didn't do that here. So it was a nightmare. Um, updating these new modules on the FDRS system is not easy. So you got to really know what you're doing. It's going to be trial and error. You really need to have a battery charger on that battery while you're doing this, because if that voltage drops below like a 12, 12 and a half volts, you can smoke one of the modules that you're working with. The new vehicles like 21 and above, 2020, 21 and above, they need to have a battery charger hooked up if that vehicle is not running while you're programming. The older ones were more forgiving. You could drop down to about a 10 and a half, 11 volts, and they'd still pretty much be okay. The new ones are so sensitive and so sophisticated that they need to see 12 and a half volts plus at all times, or else you probably will smoke that module. Yeah, frustrations, programming. But I got it done. I learned a lot in the process of doing it. And if you guys need any help at all because of how frustrating I was today, and I'm good at this, please reach out to me. Please. I, I will walk you through what you have to do with no expectations in return. Thank you.